Okay, hello, and welcome to msdynamicsworld.com's Fall 2013 BI webcast series. I'm Jason Gumpert, and today we are joined by Garth Laird, North American President of Zap Te Technologies. Today, Garth will be presenting on the topic of BI investment and the question of building BI. And as we get started, I just want to add that we welcome your questions and comments throughout the presentation. We recommend using either the chat or the Q&A blocks that you'll see on the right side of the screen. And uh, Garth will answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. So without further delay, please allow me to welcome today's speaker, Garth Laird. Thank you, Jason. Uh, for those joining us today, the few we have from Southeast Asia, I suppose it is good morning tomorrow. Uh, for those of you on the East Coast, uh, we've just ticked over to uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, we have some people joining us from uh, Europe also today, so good evening. And for the rest of us here on the uh, Central or uh, West Coast of the United States, good morning. Uh, we have over 100 people registered for today's session, so, uh, so it's exciting to see the sort of interest that is uh, spawned by a topic like this. And uh, I hope to be able to provide some value throughout the next 45 minutes or so. Um, included in our call today, we have uh, Microsoft staff. Uh, we have uh, people from the Microsoft Value Added Reseller or Partner Community. We have some of our customers, although not too many, uh, because they are customers and they've probably heard a lot of this before. And But we have a, a huge number of prospects. And those prospects with us today are from organizations that are uh, small to medium enterprise right up to full enterprise who are managing local businesses here in North America or global businesses um, and some that are uh, looking to deploy out uh, the Microsoft Dynamics suite of products to 20, 30, 50, 100 users and many here today that are actually deploying out to the thousands. So hopefully we're going to be able to provide some information uh, to all of you that will add some value around how you can uh, look at BI as it relates to uh, Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, this, this, this session today will be recorded, uh, so um, if you would like to get a copy of this to share with other members of your community or your team or your business, uh, please reach out to myself or uh, my marketing director, Stacey Goff-Johnson, and we can certainly get you a copy of that. Uh, so let's get underway, and uh, the topic for today uh, is why now is not the time to build BI. Um, the subject matter, of course, is around BI, but I think it's important to try and give you some credentials on how uh, we can talk about this, what expertise we might have. And I want to make sure that we are focusing on the fact that today's subject matter relates to the deployment of the Dynamics suite of products into mid-market organizations and lower enterprise and, and the, uh, the occasional full uh, enterprise uh, organization. As a business, uh, we've been doing this for quite a long time. We've actually been deploying out BI solutions uh, for 13 years, uh, but probably for the last five or six years, we have actually been 100% focused on the delivery of uh, BI solutions, analytical outcomes for Microsoft Dynamics customers. We have offices in seven countries, uh, and we have now over 100,000 users of our product in 40 countries around the world. Um, with that 13 years of experience comes, I suppose, a lot of experience. And what we're going to be talking about today is some of the similarities we see between um, customers of all sizes and what customers are now looking for across the board. We are very focused on Microsoft Dynamics, AX, NAB, and CRM. And to be very uh, blunt and, and uh, I suppose, direct about it, the customers and prospects and partners and Microsoft staff who are on the call today um, we're talking to you around BI being a value add and adding to the dynamic suite of products in a way where those products are seen as assets to the organization, not costs. Uh, we're smaller customers who are using Dynamics to see their IT infrastructure as a cost. Zap and our organization does not necessarily fit into that. We are selling uh, organizations uh, business intelligence where we really add tremendous value on top of the Dynamics suite. And of course, um, what we'll talk about today is the fact that uh, we're getting to a point very quickly uh, where BI is very much integrated into the deliverable uh, of CRM and, uh, and ERP these days, and it's, it's becoming a mandatory part of those deliverables. And finally, I suppose our entire motivation for being, what makes us different uh, and what difference, differentiates us in the market is we are focused every day on real BI outcomes for customers. 
Uh, one of the things I'll talk about today is the different ways you can achieve a result. Um, and in general, BI is very, very poorly deployed across the world into every segmentation of market. Uh, we have got a different model and a different way of going about that, and hopefully this call will uh, be able to deliver some value for you just around where we do differentiate. First, I just wanted to read this out because this, is, to me, is going to be the foundation of what we do talk about today. Business intelligence is a set of methodologies, processes, and technologies that transform raw transactional data into meaningful and useful information used to enable more effective strategic, tactical, and operational insights and decision making. The reason this is important, I, I, I think, for today's discussion, as I will re reiterate once again, is that business intelligence is not reporting. Business intelligence is taking the input data that comes out of process tra processing systems or transaction processing systems like ERP and CRM and taking that data and using it for the betterment of the business to understand and better manage the outcomes of the organization. It is not just simply to report on what has happened. It is to transform the business to be a better business. And I think that is the major difference between uh, reporting, uh, systems and BI systems and why a lot of customers get very confused between that difference and it is not often very well explained to them when some smaller customers with limited budgets and maybe not necessarily a vision for large levels of growth are really just looking for reporting, whereas organizations that we work with who are quite often growing very quickly, who are either national or global, who are in a competitive environment are looking for that edge and that edge can come from transforming the raw data that you get out of your ERP or CRM system and delivering that through a BI system or BI delivery point to get useful information back to the business stakeholders at multiple levels. I think that's a very important differentiation point and something that we really will come back to a few times today. Okay, so unfortunately, uh, with the number of people we have on the line, I would love to have you all in front of me uh, with the range of different people that we have with different, different experiences. We have principals from Microsoft uh, Pi Partners. We have senior Microsoft uh, executives on the line. We have CIOs and CFOs. We have sales directors. We have people even from the production floor, um, et cetera, et cetera. I'd love to have you all in front of me because this question is a question I ask a lot these days. Um, and it's always interesting to firstly see the reaction and then start to work with people around what the real answer is. So um, the reason we're on the line is to talk about why you would not actually think in 2013 to build BI, why you'd probably want to look at buying it. And at this point, I haven't ex actually explained or given you any rationale to that. But if I was to ask you this question, everybody that is on the line here is, I believe, either invested in in one way or another, the Microsoft Dynamics set of products. It might be NAV, it might be CRM, it might be AX, it might be because you're a Microsoft partner deploying and selling those solutions, it might be because you're Microsoft, you're Microsoft themselves. So how many of you, if you were sitting there as a group, would put your hand up and say, well, actually, we, saw, we, we thought very seriously about building out um, our own ERP or CRM solutions. So how many of you would have considered it an intelligent and also a good career move to go to your board or to your senior management team and say, look, here we are in 2013, we believe it would be a good both strategic and tactical move to build an ERP solution for our business. Without seeing any of you, but knowing this because I've done this many, many times, I would imagine there'll be no sheepish hands put up for that discussion. Because after 30 to 35 years of delivery out of what were originally financial management systems that became ERP solutions and CRM or Salesforce automation solutions, nobody in 2013 is going to start building out a transaction processing solution called Salesforce Automation slash CRM or Enterprise Resource Planning. So if I assume that all of you have managed to keep your hand down on that question, can I ask you why would any of you in 2013 consider that building a BI solution also makes any sense? Now at this point I really haven't given you too much information as to why or what the answer could be on that, but that is really something I want you to ponder on because that is actually the crux of what we're going to be talking about here today. So how many would you would do it? I can pretty much guarantee very few. Um, why would you then build BI? Let's think about that. 
why would you, at a, at a time where um, maybe it would be fair to say that all the industries you're in, whether it be pharmaceuticals or discrete or process manufacturing or distribution or retail or public service, uh, local uh, city councils, whatever, whatever industry or whatever business you're running there using a Dynamics product, why would it be that after this amount of time you wouldn't believe that the process flows that come out of that dynamic solution wouldn't be able to be mapped by an organisation and provide you with something that's out of the box that gets you 90% of the way there. Likewise, you would not go and build an ERP solution now. You would take something, as we, if we use AX as an example, I'd imagine most of you would take Dynamics AX and you would take it because of the fact that Microsoft will continue through their 900 strong development team to develop that product out into various industries. You'll take that as a standard product, you'll create your own business differentiators by way of small customization and you'll roll that in to your business year on year with some consistency. Um, why would you not do the same thing with BI? So in many cases the problem is that BI is so much more complex than even the implementation of an ERP or CRM system. If you think about BI, it's normally trying to go across the entire business. In quite a lot of situations, it's actually encompassing more than one data source. So in all of the customers or a great percentage of the customers that Zap deals with, we are dealing with an AX or a CRM or a NAV opportunity, but likewise it also has some old uh, historical data sources that we have to bring in and use as well. So this becomes a very complicated um, deliverable. But historically, it has been seen as being something that is quite simple. And so unfortunately, and given the fact I know all of the Microsoft partners, because we work with them in a detailed basis on a day-to-day, -day, uh, sorry, detail on a day-to-day -day basis, what I'm about to say, uh, it's not meant to offend, I think it's just meant to be real. And I know that all of, all of the organisations that we work with know me very well. Um, the reality is that the VAR community or the Microsoft reselling community are extremely good now at reselling and deploying the AX, CRM and NAV solutions. Over uh, 20 years, in fact I've been involved myself with NAV and AX and now BI for 20 years, uh, probably as much as anybody in the community. And I think the reality is that the organisations that resell and deliver AX and CRM and NAV are very good at what they're doing around the industries they specialise in. They've had many years now to develop implementation and project management templates. And in most cases now, we are seeing that those products are deploying well. But in almost all cases, those organisations are not qualified necessarily to deliver and deploy BI solutions. And therefore, as a customer, uh, or as a prospective customer, you are normally being told that what comes out of the box will absolutely do what you need it to do. Um, you don't analyse that very much in the pre-sales, but when it comes to actually starting to integrate that into your business, you become terribly disenfranchised by what you have and you need to start looking for other alternatives. And I'm about to start looking in a bit more detail about that. But the normal response is, we will just tack BI on at the end. Well, when you think about it, if you're taking a large ERP product and you're letting it run your business, you would want to think, I believe, that from the very start of that project, you'd want to make sure that the process flows that you map into that solution are going to equal the outputs that you want to get out. So BI actually should be at the start of the process to make sure that the way that you become a better organisation is understood from day one, not left to the end when there's no budget and no ability to deliver. So finally on that, really where we're getting to and where the whole industry is moving to is that BI unlocks all of the ERP investment and CRM investment that you make. It should be the preeminent decision around information systems transformation in your business. If you're going to go to the board with a 500,000, and in some cases I'm working with businesses, in fact today with Microsoft, uh, I'm involved with one of my team in a presentation to a business that has 160,000 employees, they have over 1,000 offices, um, they are going to be one of the largest deployments of Dynamics in its history. So Dynamics as a product set goes from the small to medium enterprise business up to an organisation like that. If you're going to take something like that, which might be a 25 or a $50 million investment to a board, or even if you're a small business and you're taking a 500000 to a $1 million investment to the board, 
these days in 2013, do you not think that team of people sitting looking back at you are wanting to ask you, well, how do we better manage the business with what we're about to buy? Or do you think they're only interested in, oh, let's make sure that we get the processes right so we can get information in and that will be the end of it? Believe me, those days are gone and BI will be the driving force of the deployment and success of ERP and CRM solutions globally in the next two to three years. So on the same theme again, would you build your ERP? So we're moving toward a world where ERP will be purchased as a result only of BI and analytic solutions chosen as the, uh, as that runs the business the best. So think about a world where uh, an analytics solution is actually designed to give your particular industry a whole range of outputs that are best practice for that industry. And I don't, I don't, I'm not talking particularly, it could be any industry, it could be even a micro vertical, it could be FMCG with inside of retail. If we're going to start to move to point now, which is where the world's going, where organisations will come out to RFP or to tender and they will actually look for what are the solutions that would allow us to best manage our business around the fact that we have tight margins, large competition, encroaching economies of scale from other uh, countries and, and uh, regions around the world. How can we better man manage our business to understand where our business is at across the board? That will mean that the industry analytics will become the way of selecting ERPs and ERPs may well become a consumable as part of the outcomes that you choose. So here we are in 2013, almost into 2014. You would assume that by now um, the Dynamics teams and those teams and other companies such as Oracle and SAP probably have pretty much worked out how to get you to enter a general ledger chart of accounts or a general ledger journal, a purchase order, a sales order, how to construct a bill of material, how to run, run the production for, and except for some nuances in your own business, you would hope that if you're investing in those solutions, that those transaction flows and those workflows are built into those products. But what you're really going to hope for, I would, I would think, is, is that those products will deliver you information that will allow you to be able to better manage with your team and your executive the organisation better across the board. So we're going to move, very quickly move to a scenario where industry analytics will be what you look for and then you will look to plug in ERP or transaction including CRM solutions that will be able to map to those analytics and deliver you out information that aligns to your business process and aligns to where you want to be in respect to growth, profitability, margins, stock holdings, etc. So all we're going to be in the future as suppliers of ERP and CRM solutions, we're not going to be any less. The providers on the phone today, all of our great partners who provide amazing solutions from Dynamics are still going to be as important as ever because they're going to still have to deploy those products into your businesses and map those process flows to ensure that your business still runs as it should do. However, the decision-making process will be around what the outcomes are that actually give you better information and therefore BI will become very much integrated into your business from the start, not from the end of your implementation of an ERP and CRM solution. So effective BI will not just be tools, it will be focused solutions for repeatable benefit with, which has its cost spread over like businesses with guaranteed repeatable results. Think of a scenario where sometime in the future you could be a Dynamics customer and you could go to a website which is effectively a marketplace and you could find, if you're in, as I said, FMCG, 40 best practice analytics for the FMCG segment and you could purchase those and deploy them straight onto your ERP. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to transform your business? If you were about to select a ERP or CRM, do you not think that's probably where you would start and then make sure that what you were going to plumb into those analytics was a product that actually delivered the process flows to deliver the outcomes? That is where we're going and that is why now BI is such an important aspect. So the business intelligence market. I now want to talk more about the building versus the buying. This is um, quite often um, a little bit of a contentious topic. 
Uh, I'm not going to be anything but honest today. All of our observations come from the thousands of customers we work with. Uh, I'm lucky because I've been doing, or maybe I'm unlucky, because I've been doing this for so long. I've worked with so many hundreds of customers that later on I'm going to talk to you about a few of the things that I see as consistent across all customers. But we have to be honest about our assessment of what we see in the marketplace and the customers that come to us and why they've come to us and at the velocity they are coming to us. Firstly, business intelligence in general is a failed technology for most companies. There was a time where ERP had a very, very low rate of success. As I said, especially in the Microsoft Dynamics community and, and ever more so now in uh, the CRM and AX community, the improvement of the Dynamics products, the improvement of methodologies, the improvement of project ma uh, management, all of those aspects, and also the maturity now of some of the wonderful Dynamics partners that we work with has meant that ERP is now starting to get a larger level of success and a higher level of customer satisfaction. But when it comes to BI, the BI failure rate is immense. And there are some reasons for that. There's less than 30% adoption at a user level for BI solutions within a business. Now the reason for that is BI traditionally has been something that you build. Um, you deploy your ERP solution, you have some other data sources, and you get some people to come in and they, not knowing your business necessarily, and even if they are staff on board as FTEs, they are given the thankless task to start building out an entire business intelligence uh, data warehouse, try to map the business processes that have been involved in the deployment of your ERP product and other data sources and try to understand really what the business really needs to run and manage itself better, not necessarily having ever had any business experience on how to understand what a business would need. In addition to that, because it's such a technical approach, that means that the IT departments that are unfortunately left with having to try and achieve this take a very technical approach to it and business users get left out altogether. Therefore, it becomes very departmental. It does not become pervasive. IT gets left with it and it is highly unsuccessful. As such, the existing investments that you put into this never deliver returns. If we have seen this time and time again. I've got so many countless examples. and if, Even if I had three hours today, I would not be finished with the examples that I can talk to some of you about offline if you'd like, around an organization spending quarter of a million dollars on starting to build a BI solution out, getting a little bit down the track and saying, oh, we're sort of there, let's do a little bit more. Another quarter of a million dollars later, we're still not there. Then somebody leaves and then they, it, it, it goes back to a, a, a position from, from two months ago, then they have to upgrade the ERP. Then something else happens. Then the Microsoft partner is not necessarily skilled in a particular area and could not help. All of a sudden, you're $750,000 into it. IT is now the central point for BI. The business has not been engaged and nothing is working and all that you can do is pour more and more money at it and it continues to fail. We see this time and time again. The traditional approach for BI is now dead and is dying very quickly. The traditional approach has been to say, we will build this from the ground up every time for every new customer because every new customer is different and we will deliver that to the organization on a time and materials basis and that company will take that to the board and get it signed off. Well, believe me, if you are on the call today and you're a prospective customer, you're going to have to be very brave if you're a CIO or a CFO and take that approach to a board or to a senior management team that says on an unending basis with no defined outcomes, we will start to build out a business intelligence environment and we will hope that everything continues to a point where at some stage the business gets involved and we get deliverables that they accept. It never, ever happens. And this is not Zap talking, and it's certainly not necessarily myself talking, even though I've seen it countless times. This is the experiences of hundreds of customers that we have had flocking to us after they tried to do this, and it's become untenable, the cost and the risk to the organization. So why has it failed? Well, firstly, it's a long development cycle. You can't look at a product like AX2012R2 with five and a half thousand or more tables 
with an integration of Active Directory, with an integration of independent software vendor applications that you might buy, with the integration of customizations that you may do with your um, value-added reseller, and tell me for a second that some system analysts can start to build a data warehouse in the background with no knowledge of the industry or what the business actually wants to deliver. So the development cycles become so long and so expensive that pretty much every project that we are aware of, certainly all the customers that we are speaking to who have deployed out or tried to deploy out a build mentality around a dynamic solution are either only being used in a very, very small part of the organization or have totally failed. Where they are being used and where they are successful is where one analyst is sitting, for instance, in a sales department and he and the sales director says, we have had enough of this, IT and finance cannot provide us with anything, so we will go and build our own little set of cubes and we'll get somebody to sit in the back room and develop up pipeline reports, uh, velocity reports, and we'll do our own thing. That then starts the next issue, which of course is we end up with an organization that before long has a whole lot of those people doing those things across the organization and all of them are actually delivered out of different tools with different standards and with different outcomes. I had a customer four months ago who will absolutely remain nameless and is a wonderful customer now who came to us and when we got to them and they were a good sized organization who had deployed out ERP and with, with a lot of customizations when we got to them, they had 27 cubes. They would turn up to meetings. I know some of you are about to probably take a bit of a giggle at this because it's absolutely what's going on in your business. They would turn up to meetings where they would have four or five people with different outputs, some from a BI tool, some from Excel, some on the back of a cigarette packet, and everybody would have the different outcome for what was supposed to be the same key source data. Now, in that particular case, it was quite clear to me that there were some terminal aspects to both personal roles in the business and to the ability for the business to move forward. Um, I won't go into what we did. Obviously, we deployed our products. That customer now is moving ahead massively quickly, very happily. But the reality is, is that customer could have likewise got themselves into even more and more trouble, but they saw the, the light at the end of the tunnel and they had the foresight to stop all of the development they've done over 18 months and come and work with a company that actually does this professionally, which of course is ourselves. Another angle to think about from a vendor point of view, and of course as a vendor I must never talk negatively about anybody in the marketplace, but the other angle is the option that we see in some customers as a poor customer has bought a data warehousing product from, as an example, a company in London and a, and a business intelligence solution from a company in Denmark and some other, some other piece of technology from somebody here on the West Coast and they put that together and they're calling that a BI solution. I don't know how a Dynamics customer who are trying to keep their IT departments normally fairly lean and run a fairly, uh, a fairly tight ship can see how they can take three development cycles from three different organizations on three different uh, parts of the world and come up with a BI strategy that will be fulfilling and long-term for the business. It just does not work. So as a result, once again, there's very low user adoption across these products. In addition to that, all BI projects in the past have been focused on technology. I'm not going to go into this too much because the next couple of slides I think really highlight this. BI is not technology based, it's outcome based. The business from a CFO to a sales director to a production manager, those are the people who need to drive the outputs and the outcomes using technology is only the medium. The IT department should control the data flow, should control, make sure that the data level is correct, but the actual delivery of the analytics, the creation of the analytics, the management and the use of the analytics and reporting should be managed by the business. And so all BI fails because it's all always focused on technology and not on the outcomes. And then finally, as I've been saying all along, the business never ever gets fully engaged. The business gets engaged after IT unfortunately has been put in a position to try and build this from the ground up and of course that ultimately fails. So here's a slide. Now I'm going to talk about this very openly and honestly. Um, if you can see this slide, um, this slide is a portrayal of the Microsoft Business Intelligence um, Solution Stack. 
our products, Zap, are built 100% as an augmentation of the Microsoft Business Intelligence uh, stack of products. But having said that, I think it's important to understand that you should be looking to buy a set of products that are built from the ground up to do everything you need, where all the work's being done for you because they are available. And Zap, as an example, is a company that can deliver that for you. The other option is to take all of these tools, which could be from SQL and analysis services, right through to Power Pivot and Power View, through to Excel, through to SharePoint, through to uh, Performance Point, and through to a whole range of other things, and have your BI team connect up what could be 10 or 12 pieces of technology and deliver you out as a mid-market or lower enterprise customer a business intelligence solution, and then hope that none of your people leave, that you don't have to upgrade your solutions at an ERP or CRM level too quickly, and hope that Microsoft, given the fact they're delivering amazing technologies on a regular basis, doesn't upgrade their versions of each one of those products so quickly that you can't keep as a small lean IT team up to speed with what you've just set out to build. That is the thing you need to consider. So if you look at it another way, if you look at all the things from the very bottom of the infrastructure and the storage and the servers and the SQL data sets that you need right up to the top where you might have mobile and desktop and enterprise portal and SharePoint, if you consider all of those aspects through that pyramid have to be built if you're going to build a BI solution and therefore you need people to be consistent and be in the business for a long period of time to have the knowledge across all those products and bring all of that together and you want to maintain that inside the business, then maybe building is for you. If you believe that that is too onerous for your business and for what you need to achieve and the time it will take and the cost that your business will never be able to maintain that, I would believe you should think very seriously about buying a BI solution before you start to uh, go down this path of building with all of these range of tools. Okay, as I said, I've unfortunately or fortunately been involved for 20 odd years in ERP with uh, Division as it was now NAV and Exapta as it was now AX. I've worked with companies as small as $10 million and companies as large as $20 billion, and all the industries between that. And as a result of that, I've been lucky enough, I suppose, to work with 500 or more customers in a sales execution and sometimes deployment um, scenario. So I've, I've, I've had an opportunity to see just so many different things. So hopefully I'll just share a few of those with you. What I've just hopefully shared up to now is all those customers, once they finally understand just what building is really about, actually come back down to a very simple scenario. We want to buy a complete end-to-end -end product from one vendor where they've invested all the time and all the money and all the work so we can mitigate our risk. Our time to solution is quick. We can get analytics out to the business quickly. As IT, we can look golden. The business is very happy. The executive have signed off that they've actually deployed an ERP or a CRM solution, and now they're seeing value, and everybody wins. That, in general, is what everybody is looking for. Large-scale local support. I can't underestimate this. BI is very complex. There are so many vendors out there who are expecting that BI will fail when they sell you their solution because they expect it to fail because the, usage, the, the actual usage or the take-up of BI solutions has been so poor. Um, to be successful, you need to work with an organization that's got large-scale local support that can help you from a day-to-day -day basis. Also, we are all part of the Microsoft ecosystem, which is fantastic. We need to take advantage of that. We work every day with the East Coast here in the United States, Central and West Coast businesses, also the Canadian businesses. Today, as I said, we're actually doing a presentation side by side with Microsoft with one of the biggest customers that possibly will ever be seen by Dynamics. So we work with that day in, day out. For organizations you might work with who do not work with uh, Microsoft, there's no way they can be up to speed with the change in technology. They cannot be close to what's actually really happening in the partner community or with Microsoft itself. And having said that, integration to the Microsoft ecosystem or the partner community is just such a vital thing. And I'll talk later to the, all of the partners we work with. And of course, we work with pretty much all of the major partners, not just here, but across the world. And finally, believe me, if there's ever, ever one thing you're going to do, please make these BI vendors that you might look out to to actually work with, give you, don't get, get them to give you one or two references, get them to give you five or ten. And five or ten they've done in the last six months. 
This is a very, very interesting environment we're going into. Dynamics particularly uh, is now uh, getting to a point where BI, like any ERP and CRM vendor, is such an important aspect. Every competitive sale that's involved, whether it be SAP or Oracle or Salesforce, has BI as a strong component, and as such, um, you know, make sure that you're working with a vendor that can actually understand how to deliver BI properly into the Dynamics uh, marketplace. Okay, um, with, our, with all that said, I think it's important to understand what we're doing. I'm just going to try and um, just talk to a few customers, uh, some at a very high level and then two at a very detailed level, and then I'll open up for questions. So from the point of view of customers, we as a vendor are servicing customers in Dynamics, as I said, from 50 to 100 million right up to multiple billions uh, across the world. We have lots of market segmentation covered, many verticals and many industries, um, and some of these customers on the, on the slide here are CRM, some of them are, a, most of them are AX, uh, some of them are uh, NAV, uh, a lot of them are multi-company, multi-currency, uh, multi-geography, some of them are sort of in that 100 to 500 million dollar in revenue, probably a dozen or more are multi-billion dollar companies. We uh, are experts obviously in what we do and we service the sort of customers that you are who are on the line today and that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. An example of, uh, I've got four examples now of customers just very quickly, W.B. Mason, wonderful customer based out of Boston, uh, massive two plus terabyte AX environment, struggling with getting information out to the business. We are now completing the, uh, the, 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 the data warehouse side of what we've delivered for W.B. and now we're starting to look with them to roll out BI across their very large growing and of course very old business, one of the uh, cornerstone businesses of the Northeast over 100 years old. Um, the Trada, part of um, a much bigger organisation, 3PL, uh, third party logistics company needing to put information not out into the business alone but also out into their suppliers. Uh, we actually came to them when they've been struggling with trying to get information to the business once again in a very short amount of time. They are now doing all of their complex analytical reporting with Zap. They're do it, sending it out to external stakeholders as well as internal stakeholders. Um, and once again, just a great uh, case study for us. Uh, Humana Concentra, a large CRM deployment part of the Humana group, uh, had put a lot of time into trying to build out um, CRM-based reports. They are very highly XRM or customised environment with inside CRM, and Zap has transformed their data. So we've actually provided them with a solution, and I just noticed this morning they have 12 people being trained at the moment to take this product out into the business. So it's a really another exciting one for us. And finally, one of the other great customers, a Microsoft Enterprise managed customer out of the northeast, Martinetti, one of the largest wine and spirits companies in the North in, in North America, uh, really large organisation, uh, now going to take Zap and use it as one tool across the whole business from finance to sales to credit control and a whole range of things, wonderful organisation and deploying out Zap across, as I said, the whole business. But I thought we could spend ages just talking about high level. I thought what we'd do today is talk about two particular customers. Of late, we've had two, two customers who've actually written quite a uh, detailed account of their uh, integration with Zap, and that account has gone to a number of very influential people uh, in the Microsoft ecosystem. And so I thought I'd, de I'd sort of delve into a bit of detail. Unfortunately, both Bart and Mike um, from another company, Rainier, cannot be with us today. Unfortunately, uh, we've been such a busy organisation in the last few weeks with uh, certain conferences, we just could not arrange to get Bart and Mike on the line today, but they have, um, given me their blessing for me to discuss uh, with you today uh, just exactly their experiences around building versus buying and I've also got their email addresses if you want to reach out to them. Bart Fraboda from Clean Energy, Bart is a very senior CIO in the Microsoft Dynamics community. He's a CIO for Clean Energy Fuels. Uh, before that he was senior VP of uh, IT for Westfield Global. As most of you know, a $40 billion leader in shopping centre management and here I am in San Francisco just up the road in Market Street, one of the most magnificent buildings buildings is the Westfield building, which is a, a magnificent um, tier one shopping centre complex. Um, but Clean Energy owns more than 270 natural gas uh, fueling stations across the US. Uh, they enable a uh, 650 uh, fleet of customers to tank up their uh, vehicles all over the country, and they have um, 
uh, production plants in Canton and Dallas producing LNG in those two plants in California and Texas. So they are a really fast growing NASDAQ listed company where they have deployed both AX and CRM. I'm going to tell you now, this is exactly from Art's uh, disposition that he has sent to us and has been sent to other people, and very happy to share that with anybody on the line. Also very happy to send you, and it's on the last slide here, Bart's contact details for you to talk to him. Um, Clean Energy was really struggling with delivering the standard cubes, dashboards, and BI with an IX. They felt it fell way short of expectations. Um, they didn't want to go back to senior management uh, to request additional funds or the nine to 12 months it would take to implement a new solution. And this morning, I've actually been on the line with two businesses, one in, the, one in Eastern Canada and one here in the West Coast, where both, in the, both situations, it's the same situation. Um, they are looking to consider our product versus building out uh, the Dynamics AX cubes. And in both situations, um, both organizations are not keen to go back to management, ask for more money, and ask for more time, because that's not available. Of course, in our situation, um, more money is, is not so much the issue. It's the fact we cut down the time to almost nothing. So they obviously uh, priced out things like business objects and Cognos. And at a million and a half dollars, they realized they wouldn't even have a single report produced. Now, Bart, because of his background, had worked with Cognos, business objects, SAP, Oracle in the past, had, had run multi-billion dollar uh, BI projects and had seen all this before. So initially, they tried to create the necessary reports in-house, and they invested two months of external and internal resources, about $200,000 of external consulting, to try and build out the BI cubes and AX and provide some basic views of the data. That did not work. So they then began to develop an RFP to go to market and see if they could find a business case that senior management would accept. Not what they wanted to do, but what they believed they had to do. They then heard about Zap for one of our Microsoft partners. And they heard that it was a, uh, a build uh, versus buy scenario where they could buy our solution and it would come out of the box. Now, Bart has said to me many times he was incredibly skeptical given his history and his background. So he uh, heard the promise many times before from many vendors and just did not believe it was true. After two initial calls and some demonstrations, Bart and his uh, IT director and BI manager, Raphael, actually did give Zap a test drive in clean energy. What came from that was that after the successful test drive, which was about a week and a half, they bought an enterprise license for AX and CRM for the entire business. Within two weeks, the infrastructure and software of Zap was in place and information was flowing from AX already through Zap. Within six weeks, we had already customized all the data and they had a lot of customization in AR particularly. All of that was coming through Zap, and they were now starting to deliver reports, dashboards, and KPIs out to the entire business. Before Zap was deployed, the major complaint was the lack of reporting and data from the system. Now that Clean Energy was using Zap, there was complete visibility. AX would not have delivered the promised level of satisfaction without the Zap solution. And from Bart's point of view, the best part of this, it was all delivered in six weeks. Now, on the, on the top of the slide there is Bart's uh, email address. Uh, take that or reach out to Stacey and I. I'm very happy to forward that on. I know he'd be very happy to talk to any of you who are considering uh, the building of a BI solution or the buying of a solution like that. The second story is a, a company called Renair. Uh, Mike Willison, who's a director of IT, Mike has been instrumental in the, the, the deployment of AX and Zap into this business. This is a business that delivers out globally uh, and is a leader in oral and personal healthcare products. So they, they actually manufacture uh, products for the, um, the healthcare and oral industry globally and are deploying that all over the world. Now, Rainier actually selected, once again, AX for the many advantages it's held for a company of Rainier's size. Rainier is a good, solid, strong American mid-market organization with a lot of history and a lot of success. Frustration occurred when utilizing the bundled BI solution within this case, Dynamics AX. It took their internal consultant a month to configure initially, and then Rainier realized that was just the tip of the iceberg. And I'll remind you, this is not my words. This is very much the words of our customers. The more Rainier began to understand what would be involved with utilizing the BI included with an AX, the more Rainier realized that they would have to hire expensive consultants to get the information they needed. After several costly and time-consuming attempts using standard SQL Server, uh, Visual Studio, SSRS, et cetera, Renier just happened to come across Zap once again through one of our Microsoft partners.
On the top of the screen there is Mike's email address for any of you who might want to reach out. Renair have now been using Zap for a year as the basis for all of their reporting needs. And as Mike states, I just wish this product had been an optional module to bundle with AX originally. Zap is AX, AOT and AOS aware. We are also, from an NAB point of view, Seaside aware, obviously, and we're very much integrated into the XRM development environment of CRM. We couple our Cube Express product and allowed Renier to generate all the cubes required for ZAP reports, KPIs, and dashboards. So once again, as I said, one of the big things for Renier was we came with a complete solution from the very lowest data level right up to the presentation of analytics now out onto their mobile devices. Because if you go to the iTunes store, you can now download ZAP from the iTunes store as a mobile integration path. Even their non-technical people could easily use ZAP. It is easy to modify, update, and deliver new ZAP reports. Once again, these are all Mike's words, and I'd like you to reach out to him. Bottom line is ZAP allows them there to deliver AX data to the groups that need it without having to train them in AX or worry about how to create queries. The combination of AX and ZAP makes both a stronger solution. Folks, we have, a, we have a plethora of customers like this. I've chosen these two because just lately they've been very instrumental in some very interesting work we're doing, which I cannot mention on this call. But we have so many other customers that I can get you to reach out to. And if you want to reach out to Stacey and I, we can put you in touch with them. Look, finally, uh, as I said, you can't, you can't participate well in the Microsoft ecosystem unless you're working with Microsoft or the Microsoft partner community. Um, we are working with all the large partners globally. Hitachi, uh, one of the major partners now globally for Microsoft Dynamics, is now utilizing Zap on top of AX and CRM and so many of their new and existing customers. And we are working on some massive deal, excuse me, with Hitachi at the moment, including one that is uh, just on between five and 6,000 seats that is actually closing as we speak. And that will be the sort of deal that we will work with Hitachi going forward. Likewise, we have uh, integrated our product into the Hewlett Packard CRM deliverable globally, where Hewlett Packard for certain industries is selling CRM hosted with Zap integrated. We're working with people like Columbus, one of the, the oldest and most successful partners globally um, across the world, and one of Columbus's subsidiaries, To Increase, which is one of the largest um, independent software vendors supplying industry solutions to the Dynamics community globally. Uh, Zap and To Increase are just about to announce in September at a conference uh, in a couple of weeks' time that we've integrated Zap into all the To Increase products too, and so many AX and NAB customers are using To Increase products. So finally, just a graphical depiction of what we do. At the bottom there is your Microsoft Dynamics product uh, integrated to SQL Server. We have a product called Cube Express. That product, a couple of years ago, won Microsoft, uh, uh, Microsoft Global uh, Innovation Award, not just for Dynamics, but for the whole of Microsoft. Uh, it integrates to your SQL Server and your Microsoft Dynamics solution and builds a data warehouse uh, basically within hours. We then attached a browser-based BI solution called Zap BI. It creates all the dashboards and scorecards, KPIs, reports, and analytics. All of those are all active web parts. They can then be put up into SharePoint. They can be put into the AX user interface, the CRM user interface, the NAV user interface. And then as a result of all of that, we've already built out of the box a 1,000 plus analytics for NAV, CRM, and AX that come out of the box that cover all areas of GL, AP, AR, sales, purchasing, inventory, manufacturing, supply chain, and the list goes on. So finally, folks, um, with about seven or eight minutes to go, um, there's a great uh, event coming up uh, for customers of uh, both, you know, all three, actually, NAV, uh, CRM, and AX in Tampa in October. We are a major sponsor of that event. So if any of you are interested, uh, reach out or reach out to the uh, user groups themselves. Uh, we'd love to see you there. And given the fact that I'm coming up to five minutes of the hour, I'm just going to uh, now sign off and ask um, Jason if there are any questions that may well have come through. All right. Thanks, Garth. Uh, so, yeah, so now uh, this is the time when you can enter your, your questions uh, off on the right side under the either the chat or the Q&A, whichever you'd prefer. And, uh, and we will take as many as we have time for here. So, Garth, uh, one question that came in, how long does implementation really take from the installation to being able to deliver reports on our business needs? Yeah, that's, uh, that's always one of those uh, really fantastic questions. Um, look, I think um, Di Microsoft Dynamics is such a diverse community of customers. Uh, as I said, we have, you know, we have customers that have got 20 users of our 
of our product. We've also got customers now who are looking to deploy out thousands of users of our product. Um, it really depends on whether it's a single deployment of Zap into a single business that is national and uh, depending on the size. But in general, um, even some of the larger organizations that we deal with, within the first week, they've deployed our Cube Express product, they've built out their data warehouse, they're starting to connect Zap, they're starting to download all of our standard analytics, and they're starting to see some of the core analytics around uh, financials, uh, supply chain, sales and purchasing start to render up. Over the next couple of weeks, a lot of that gets verified. Then, of course, there's trainers of training of the users, and that depends on the size of the user community and whether it's a small community or whether we're training a, uh, a set of trainers who will go out and train the wider community. Normally, within the six, first six weeks, most organizations are started, starting to render out uh, consistent analytics to the, to the user community. And certainly within the first three months, the business is normally starting to use that on a day-to-day -day basis across finance, across sales, across production at a level that they, you know, that they want and, and they need to do. And then, of course, over the first, over the, the first six months, normally it's fully in production and, and all working. That depends on uh, the resources of the customer. It depends on what role they want ourselves or our Microsoft partner to take. And it also depends on just the size of the business. But in general, uh, Jason, anywhere between six weeks to three months to get the initial thing all up and running, and then up to six months if it's a large business to roll it all out. All right, great. Uh, we have a couple of questions coming in about... Um, just getting a couple of uh, things, just getting access to today's presentation, uh, getting a copy of the slides, um, getting uh, access to the recording, and, and maybe you can comment on um, how you might be able to uh, to give people more of that kind of information uh, beyond the call. Sure. Well, I'm assuming, Jason, maybe you can help me. I'm assuming that we get um, some sort of email contact with uh, uh, with the, 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 the attendees. So if that's the case, we'll be able to send out to uh, all the attendees a copy of the presentation. Okay, perfect. Um, uh, another question, I think this might be another one for, for handling offline, but um, business cases for uh, Dynamics NAV customers, I'm guessing you have those that you could reach out to people with. Um, someone just inquired about. Yeah, about absolutely. And, and whether, it's, whether it's business cases, whether it's reference customers or, or whatever it is, we, we certainly, um, you know, I will make the point there are a lot of Dynamics NAV customers where ZAP is not appropriate. But there are also probably 20% of the customers globally, and given the fact that Dynamics NAV has more than 100,000 customers, 20,000 of those are probably very appropriate for our product. And all I would then say is it just depends on uh, what the customer is looking to do. But in the cases where they are looking at IT as being a strategic differentiator and therefore BI to really help them, we can provide them with a solution so much better in NAV than anything else out there available. Okay, and another question I'm going to sort of paraphrase here, but. Um, Essentially, the person's asking, how would you compare um, your solution to some of the larger BI players in the market, the um, you know the Cognoses or the Hyperions of the world, um, either in terms of features or in terms of uh, you know in in, in the uh, Dynamics market. Yeah, it's it's interesting. That's a, that's a wonderful question because in the last 12 months, particularly, we've had we've had so many. Customers, well, sorry, they were prospects. They are now customers who have come to us, and during the presentations, um, they have said, "This is really like a Cognos or a Business Objects or a Hyperion for the Microsoft stack." We hear that so often, and so that is one aspect to it. The other aspect you've got to remember is BI. The complexity of BI is very much about getting the data level right. It's very nice to have a sexy presentation layer with lovely KPIs and scorecards and dashboards. Everybody likes that. But if that's delivering data that's wrong, then that's real problem, really problematic. We have spent tens of millions of dollars to map out AX4, AX29, AX2012 and R2, all the NAB solutions, CRM4 and CRM2011. We've mapped all of those standard environments out. So we can get a data warehouse and therefore a deployment of BI up and running for an enterprise AX or CRM customer in days and weeks. If you took a Cognos, it would take them six to 12 months to map out the data environment alone, apart from just the cost of the infrastructure to maintain those products. And Bart Traboda at Clean Energy, the first reference I gave today, um, has had all those experiences and has done all that before. And that's the sort of individual who is now deploying out Dynamics products and has seen what Zap's capable of, who would be very good for anybody in that situation or who is interested to talk to. And we can connect uh, people up if that's, uh, if that's needed. Okay, a question came in here for NAV customers. Um, 
of of Zap? What is the minimum size of customer in terms of revenue, number of users, and um, can you? I don't know if you want to talk about this on uh, here, but in terms of minimal cost for starter implementations. Um, look, I won't talk about cost because I think that's a thing that goes you know hand in hand with a, a discussion with each individual customer. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think it is important to realise that um, there's no minimum, but there may be a minimum in the eyes of the customer. You know, we we've got organisations in NAV that turn over um, three or four hundred million. In fact, we've got one in Australia that turns over about seven hundred and fifty million dollars using NAV in thirteen locations. Um, if you're a ten million dollar business using NAV for five users, I can guarantee you now. Uh, this is not a call for you, and, and ours is not a product for you. But so where we, at the point I try to continue to reinforce, if you see that your NAV solution is strategic to you, and you see the information that you want to get out of that is strategic, then Zap is very much a solution you should look at. If you believe that NAV is a cost, and really all you're looking for is P&L balance sheets and some reporting, I'm sure you should go and look at something like Jet Reports or just use Excel because that's a much better option for you. Another person asks, um, what if a customer is using several applications, um, you know, SQL, Oracle databases, where data flows into Dynamics? Is, how do you handle yep. that case? So all of our enterprise customers and a lot, lot of our mid-market customers, none of them just have um, a Dynamics solution. Uh, we have JD Edwards, we have Lawson, we have SAP, we have Retail, we have Infomix, we have Great Plain. We have so many different interfaces. Not that we have standard interfaces for those, but we have companies who require us to be able to get data out. Cube Express, through Microsoft's technology called Link Server, can link to any of those databases and bring through data into Cube Express to bring together that with AX or CRM or NAV to create a data warehouse that gives you the information you need. So we do that every day of the week and our products are designed to do that. So I'll just reiterate again, very few of our enterprise customers come to us with just AX or just CRM, normally they've got an old ERP that they need to bring data in from or they've got other ancillary data sources. Um, our products are designed to do that. All right, so uh, let's make a last call for questions here as we kind of uh, come in on the end of the hour. Uh, one other question, if, uh, if, if business uh, analysts are, are building their own reports, um, so sort of before there's a, a, a real BI solution in place, um, is it hard to get them on board using a new BI solution and um, to get them to either migrate or abandon their old old reports? Oh, I think that's you know I, look <laughs> once again um, just on, on in the spirit of being honest in a discussion like this with professionals who are out there listening to what I have to say. The reality is there will always be a desire for an individual who has put a lot of time and energy into building a whole lot of stuff to try and hold that there. But an organization has to look and see whether that is the right strategy moving forward because it is very risky. Now, that maybe we see quite often in our pre-sales uh, exercises that we have people who very much resist wanting to come on board with Zap. When the business makes that decision, what they very quickly realize, once they get trained in Zap, they've got a whole new range of skills they never had before that they can take back out to the marketplace. So no, I don't think so, Jason. I think in most cases now people are realizing the future of BI is what we're doing. It is not bespoke building of analytics and keeping that knowledge to one or two people. Those days have gone. All right, well, that closes out our questions for now, and we are at the top of the hour, so I want to say thanks, Garth, for uh, for joining us today. Uh, no problem at all, Jason. Thank you for the opportunity to MS Dynamics World. Our pleasure, and thanks to everyone on the line for joining and for the great questions, and, uh, and have a great day. Thanks, folks. Thanks very much, and uh, reach out if you need to. Thank you.